it's, it's my assignment uh, to just preach to, to mess ups, uh, folk who's fallen. I don't know who I'm talking to, but if you ain't messed up or if you haven't fallen or if you didn't fail, um, come back next month. Amen. Which is next Sunday. Amen. And, um, but I, I want to just talk about this whole issue of failing and the premise behind these preaching presentations is to let you know that you can move beyond mistakes. There's life after divorce. You can bounce back from bankruptcy. Uh, that you can get up after sin and shortcomings and falls and even with your habits and practices and stuff that we struggle with. That God can give you favor after failure. Tell us whenever that's good news. And so I want to I want to look at another uh, another failure. Uh, this man by the name of David. I want to read Psalm 51, and I'm grateful for all of our pastors and ministers and and ushers and this music ministry alike. Um, from the King James version, I want to read it today. It says, "Have mercy upon me, O God, according uh, to Thy loving kindness, according." to the multitude of your tender mercies uh, blot out my transgressions uh, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou might be justified when thou speakest and clear when you judge Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Now you desire truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part. Thou shalt make me know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones that you broke may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Lord, cast me not away from your presence. Please, Lord, don't take your spirit away from me. Restore unto me the joy <clears throat> of my salvation and uphold me with your free spirit and when you do all that then will I teach transgressors their ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee you may be seated in the very presence of the Lord under the same flag of finding favor after failure I just want to preach from these words Lord work on me <laughs> Turn to somebody and look him in the face and say, neighbor, I need the Lord to work on me. <laughs> and tell him, neighbor, you ain't lying. <laughs> Us as you may be seated. When you look in your Bible in Psalm 51, above verse number one, there is a superscription. And that says to the chief musician, a Psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him, after he had gone into Bathsheba. Uh, this superscription above verse number one really is a part of the word of God and it gives us the context and the setting of this sinful situation. Uh, when you read the, the superscription above verse number one, it kind of paints the pitiful picture upon which our sermon is painted upon today which was the occasion by which David messed up, he sinned, had an indiscretion, he sinned and failed with Bathsheba. Most of us in the building this morning, we are familiar with this particular account. And when you look at Psalm 51, Psalm 51 is the prayer that David prays after he failed. And you got to see this because the Bible is absolutely clear that uh, he did fall. He did, he did fail. In fact, just tell your neighbor, he did fail. Uh, he let himself down. He let God down. Uh, he let uh, Bathsheba down. He let the nation down. It, it's, it's no other way to look at it, but David, he messed up. And he messed up big time. In fact, uh, the consequences of this mess up has 
uh, caused at least two people to die. Um, the consequences of his mess up will have eternal ramifications. David, there's no other way to put it. He, he, he let the Lord down. And when you do a biographical study of the life of David, you come to understand that not only did he fail, but he fell after the Lord anointed him multiple times. Uh, at the time of this failure, David had been anointed three different times. He was anointed in 1 Samuel 16 prior to facing Goliath in 1 Samuel 17. Secondly, he was anointed uh, uh, in the beginning of chapter Sam of Samuel, 2 Samuel, uh, when he was promoted to be king over all Judah. And then thirdly, he was anointed after Saul died to be king over all Israel. And it is interesting, after having multiple anointings on his life, after the Lord anoints David three different times for three different reasons on three different occasions, David still failed God. I want you to see how um, awesome this is and the point I'm trying to make because I'm suggesting to you that you could be wearing the anointment and still be a disappointment. Gosh, I just said something. I, I want you to look at where David is because David is the one that God literally lifted up. But how ironic it is that the one that Dave, God lifts up is the one that let God down. Somebody better hear me because uh, it is frustrating and it's perplexing and it's almost kind of, um, uh, it goes against uh, what we represent when God has anointed you and you know that you are the anointed person of God and still have failures. But Psalm 51, again, it represents the prayer that David prays after he failed. Please don't miss what I said and how I said what I said. I said that this is the prayer that David prays after he fails. Yes, he fell, but he still talked to God in prayer. Somebody need to hear the significance of that because uh, the devil will make you think that your conduct have cut off your contact with the creator. Let me try that one more time. The devil tries to make you feel that your conduct has cut off your contact with the creator. But you've got to understand that even when you fall, even when you make mistakes, even when you let God down, that you are not too low that you can't pray. That you have not done anything that's so bad that God that don't want to hear from you. It kind of reminds me that when my daughter uh, mess up, it is not the mess up that make me not want to talk to her. It is the mess up that make her not want to talk to me. And that's what the devil does. The devil tries to make us feel that we are not longer worthy, that we are no longer capable, that we are totally disqualified of getting up, dusting ourselves off, and going back to God in prayer. But tell your neighbor, the devil is a liar. That no matter where you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how low you are, God still is open to hear from you through prayer. Are you hearing me? This text, Psalm 51, it is, it is the prayer that uh, David prays again after he, he messes up. But what's interesting is that David does not call on God until he was convicted by God. Uh, let me say it again. He does not call on God until after being convicted by God. Can the church say, thank God for conviction? Uh, yeah, you can't see conviction, you can't taste conviction, you can't taste conviction, but you can feel conviction. Uh, in the moment you accept Christ as your personal savior, a, a part of the package uh, of salvation is something that's called conviction. And when a child of God uh, mess up, um, conviction tracks you down. And I don't care how secure your home is, conviction can get behind the bars on your window. I don't care what alarm company you use, a conviction can creep in and move beyond the monitor and the motion detector. Conviction will hunt you down. 
And when you read Psalm number 32, in fact, flip there very quickly, Psalm 32, um, verse number 3 and verse number 4, uh, you'll discover that David uh, was trying to keep this thing undercover. Uh, keep in mind, David is the king of Israel. And as the king of Israel, watch this, he is beyond approach. Can the church say beyond approach? That people just can't walk up to David and point their finger at David and accuse him of a crime. He's the king. He is beyond approach. People just can't walk up um, to David and accuse him of capital punishment. He is the, the king. And because he is the king, watch this. He is above approach. But though he is above approach, he's not above reproach. That God can get to anybody. That regardless. Regardless of how high you are, regardless of where you sit in the sanctuary, whether it's the pulpit or the pew, regardless of, of what you do in ministry, uh, when you mess up, God has a way of getting to you, uh, letting you know that you have uh, messed up. And what God does is he'll send conviction. And when David tried to cover this thing up, uh, he later confesses in Psalm 32, verse 3. He says, when I kept silent, my bones waxed old through my roaring all day long. He says, for day and night, your hand was heavy upon me and my moisture was turned into the drought of summer. In other words, David says, Lord, you snatched my people. Peace. I couldn't rest at night that you kept messing with me. You kept bothering me. Lord, I, I didn't want to confess and I didn't want to talk about it, but, but, but conviction kept bothering me and conviction kept messing with me so much so that I couldn't have any peace in my life. I don't understand how people uh, uh, who claim to be Bible, uh, uh, Bible toting and tongue talking and cross wearing folk uh, can mistreat people and then uh, walk by them acting like they ain't never done nothing. I can't understand how people that claim to be filled uh, with the Holy Ghost and come to church and fire baptized, y'all ain't hearing me, and, and, and come to church and sit beside people that you know you've transgressed against and still won't apologize because the moment you accept Christ as your savior. Are y'all hearing me? The moment you accept Christ as your savior, there's something that's called conviction that won't let you rest at night. I just can't look you in the face knowing I talk behind your back. I can't just sit beside you acting like everything is cool when I know I've tried to hurt you because conviction won't let me rest. Ah, uh, David was uh, convicted. Uh, Prophet Nathan came to David and told David this parable. He goes to David and tells David a little story. It's found in 2 Samuel uh, um, chapter number 12. He tells, he tells David, David, there was uh, two men. One was a rich man. One was a uh, a poor man. The rich man had many sheep and cattle and the poor man had one little ewe lamb and there was a time when the rich man had company and instead of killing one of his own sheep, he, 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 he took his neighbor's only little sheep, the one that he loved, the one that ate from his table, the one that drank from his cup, uh, the one that he held in his bosom, the one that he treated like family. David, what should be done to this man and David said filled with anger that he should be put to death Nathan said that thou art the man are y'all hearing me that David is confronted with his sins and it is only after he's confronted and convicted of his sins and that he utters this prayer in Psalm 51 he he talks to God in prayer he prays and look in Psalm 51 if you will because what's impressive about about this prayer is that David cries to the sovereign while being conscious of his sins uh, David, when he prays to God, D David is fully aware of his own transgressions. D D David is aware of his own sins. Watch this. He's conscious of his sins. I maintain, watch this, that there are three impossibilities for a believer. There are three things that cannot happen to a believer. Number one, a believer cannot totally be uh, controlled by sin. Are y'all hearing me? 
Uh, yeah, a believer cannot totally be controlled by sin, meaning the moment you accept Christ as your personal Savior, uh, that you are now uh, the, the house for the Holy Ghost, that, that the presence and the power of the paracletus now takes up residence in your life. And now that you are saved, watch this, you have no saying power, that the things that the devil used to do, he can't do as easily anymore because now you you have power that now before uh, when you had no control when you had no say so uh, now that you are saved uh, you have uh, control that now you don't have to give in to the desires of the flesh that now when the devil tries to tempt you you have the power to say no and somebody today uh, ought to thank God for that power that now that you are saved that you're no longer a pawn in the devil's game that the devil can't play you like a puppeteer he can't play are y'all hearing me that 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 now that you are saved that the devil does not have total control over your life that sin knows where you live but sin does not reside where you live that now that you are saved now you have some power tell your neighbor i've got power now so the first thing, watch this, that cannot happen as a believer is, uh, number one, you cannot totally uh, be uh, controlled by sin. Secondly, as a believer, you cannot totally uh, be comfortable uh, in sin. That if you are a child of God, if the power, I'm a preach to myself, if you have the power of God on the inside, uh, you cannot totally uh, be comfortable in sin. That's the difference between uh, hogs and sheep. Uh, oh, help me preach today. Uh, a, a hog is comfortable in slop. A hog is comfortable in dirt. But a sheep ain't comfortable in filthy places. Uh, that's why the Bible says that we are the sheep of his pasture. Are y'all hearing me? Because uh, as a child of God, uh, there ought to be something uncomfortable about sin. Uh, that's why even when you mess up during the week, you can't wait to come to church on Sunday morning. Uh, because though you have messed up, you can't come. You can't wait to come to get washed off by by the word of the Lord. Are y'all hearing me? That's the difference between you and some of your sinful friends uh, that you can do the same thing as they do but come Sunday morning uh, you got to take a bath or come Sunday morning uh, you just can't wallow in the sins of the week. You've got to come uh, and get rinsed off by the word of God. Can I preach today? Because as a believer, I'm going somewhere, as a believer, number one, you cannot be totally controlled by sin. Secondly, you cannot totally be comfortable in sin. But thirdly, as a believer, you cannot be totally clueless to sin. Uh, preach Pastor Jackson I'm trying you cannot be totally clueless um, to sin that the moment uh, we mess up something called conviction will set in are y'all hearing me that you don't have to tell me I messed up I got a built in reminder that I've messed up you don't have to tell me to go apologize something inside me won't let me look at you and not apologize I can't be comfortable clueless and controlled by sin Oh, it's kind of quiet in this house today. Look at the text in verse number one. D D David in verse number one, uh, he's not clueless to his sins. In verse number one, he refers to his sin as uh, transgressions. He says, uh, my transgressions. Keep your Bibles open. Can the church say transgressions? Uh, that word transgression is an interesting word. It, it really means rebellious. Uh, it, it means to rebel. Watch this. It, uh, it paints the picture of stepping out of bounds. Are y'all hearing me? It, uh, it, it paints the picture of, of, of going beyond the parameters of purity. Look at what the writer is saying. The writer is saying, Lord, I admit my transgressions. That, that I, I admit that I have stepped out of bounds. Y'all ain't hearing me. I, I admit, uh, Lord, I have uh, been rebellious. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Somebody in the building today, you need to praise God that every time you rebelled, every time you step out of bounds, the Lord brought you 
back in bounds. That's what David said in Psalm 23. Watch this. The David says that he restoreth my soul. E-T-H meaning I go astray. However, he comes after me like the good shepherd and he brings me back to the fold over and over and over and over again. And somebody needs to understand that when people see you praising God, then you're not praising God for riches. You're praising God for restoration. You're not praising God because you got a new ride. You're praising God because you've been restored. And there's no kind of praise that comes from the person uh, of the lips from a person uh, who know how far away you have been uh, but instead of leaving you out of bounds uh, God comes behind you uh, and brings you back into the fold uh, and somebody in the building need to have a flashback uh, of the last time you went astray and God came and found you picked you up and brought you back to church and you praise the Lord because uh, I've been restored watch this in verse 1, he refers to his sins as transgressions. Can the church say transgressions? But look in verse number 2. He refers to his sins as iniquity. Somebody just shout iniquity. Uh, that word iniquity in the Hebrew is a very interesting word because the word literally means perversity. Oh God, yes, that's what it means. It means perversion. It means perversity. Listen at what they, th listen. This is the man of God. This is David. Tell your neighbor, this is David. This is the anointed vessel and the voice of God. But look at what he says in verse number two. Uh, in the text, he, he says, Lord, uh, he says, I admit that I have uh, iniquity. He says, my iniquity. Uh, in other words, my life at this point is the comparable antithesis of what you are looking for. Because in verse number six, Lord, you are desiring truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part, you want me to be wise. So what I'm telling you, God is this not only is my life uh, 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 amen out of bounds but I'm admitting God that there's still some things about my character things about my nature there's still some things about me God that doesn't line up with your desire because uh, you are desiring purity uh, and by my own admission God I have some perverse practices uh, and I'm talking to somebody right now don't raise your hand just kind of weak at me if I'm talking to you uh, that even though you are saved to the bone and sanctified to the marrow you still have some issues about you but what makes me praise the Lord is I can go to God with all of my issues and tell the Lord Lord I know I've got some issues that's why I need you to work on me and somebody today need to give God praise in this house because you know in spite of everything you've got going on the mere fact you can still function with your dysfunction is nothing but a, bl a blessing from the Lord the mere fact you can come the church and give God praise with a clean heart and a clear mind knowing that there's things about you in your life that's not straight is nothing short of a miracle from the Lord because if your neighbor knew some of your perversity if your neighbor knew your real issue if your neighbor knew your private problem if your neighbor knew your hidden hang up your neighbor wouldn't be so quick to sit beside you but I praise God that God can cover me God can fix me up Lord work on me watch this in verse 1 Bernard he mentions transgressions in verse 2 he talks about iniquities in verse 3 he says my sins are y'all hearing me that word sin in verse number 3 it literally means to miss the mark can the church say to miss the mark Oh, God, look how conscious David is. David is saying, you got to catch this. D D David is saying, Lord, um, um, I've stepped out of bounds. Um, I have um, perverse practices. God, help me preach. And, 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 and I missed the mark. But I'm coming to you because you can work on me. Oh, am I talking to anybody? Because it comes a time when you've got to be real with yourself. 
I'm a preach any. I'm a preach it anyhow. It, it, it comes a time when you got to stop complaining about your neighbor, complaining about your husband, your wife, and there's a time when you got to say, Lord, it's me, oh Lord. I'm standing in the need. Y'all ain't hearing me. In the need of prayer, David. Watch this. It's not only conscience of his sins, but in the text he confess his sin. Look in verse four. D D David says in verse number four, against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. David confessed. Tell your neighbor, he confesses. I, I want to spend about five minutes on this issue. Stay with me on confession um, because I really believe that um, we, we have a misnomer as it relates to this issue of confession. And I got to teach this today, this issue of confession. Um, um, I, I heard a few days ago um, that this convicted psychopath, Danny Rollins, confessed. Um, on, on his deathbed, he, he confesses um, that he killed other people before he got to Gainesville. And, and the buzz now is this latest confession um, by Danny Rollins. However, that's not the kind of confession um, that the Lord uh, is requiring of us. When you read 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, uh, when the Bible talks about confessing our sins, uh, it's not the kind of confession that Danny Rollins make because his confession is without remorse. His confession uh, is because he's guilty. It's because uh, he's caught. That's not the kind of confession that God is looking for. Watch this. God it wants us to be in agreement with us. The word that John used for confess in the Greek is homologeo. And it means to be in agreement. It means to see our sins the same way God sees our sins. It is us going to God, looking in the mirror and saying, God, I'm looking at myself the same way that you look at me. Other folk may think I got it going on, but God, I'm looking past the black dress. I'm looking past the black suit. I'm looking beyond my title. I'm looking beyond my position. And God, I see me just as you see me, as nothing but a sinner saved by grace. I see myself as nothing but filthy rags on my best day. Look at what David says. David says, Lord, it's not my mother. It's not my father. Lord, I sin. I'm taking responsibility because I messed up. Is anybody getting this today? Watch this. Look in verse number four. D D David says in verse four, Psalm 51, he says, I have sinned. Watch this. He, he don't blame Bathsheba. It's kind of quiet. When I talk about sin, it gets real quiet. That's all right. I brought some amens with me. Um, he doesn't say, um, well, it wasn't my fault. Um, um, she was bathing naked in front of my window. It wasn't my fault. But he says, it's my fault. I, I sinned. He, 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 he doesn't say, um, um, it, it was Uriah. Um, um, because if he would have been home um, taking care of his business, you know, um, I, I, I wouldn't even been there. Um, but, but he says, no, it, it's, it's my fault. Um, um, he, he doesn't say uh, it, it, was, it was the servant because um, the servant knew um, that she was married because I asked my servant who she was and, 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 and he knew um, she was married and so he shouldn't even brought her um, to my chamber in the first place. Look at, he said, no, it's, 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 it's my fault. What David does is uh, he takes responsibility for his own action. Are y'all hearing me? Uh, you, you see, God can't deliver you if you're in denial. Are you hearing me? So what God does is uh, God is requiring us to be honest. God is requiring us to confess. And what helps me confess to God is knowing he already knows anyway. Uh, he saw you when you, oh God, y'all ain't hearing me. Uh, in fact, he knew it when you thought it. He knew it before you did it. And, uh, in fact, before the fullness of time were ever came. In fact, before you were ever born, God knew on that night at that time with that person, uh, you were going to mess up. And because he already knows you might as well go ahead and fess up and tell the Lord I'm not blaming nobody else but Lord I'm coming to you I admit I did it watch this watch this it gets better it gets better because I can see the look on your faces it gets better after he confesses his sins he desires the Lord to cleanse him from his sins 
Okay, look at verses 7, 9, and 10. Look at the text. The Bible says in verse, um, uh, um, verse 7, um, he says, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, I shall be whiter than snow. Verse 9, hide your face not hide your face from my sins, blot out my iniquities. Verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Listen at David's request. Watch this. David says, purge me, wash me, and then give me. Someone just say, purge me. Um, um, th th David says, Lord... Take me through a purging process. Oh, gosh. I, I, I'm, I'm not satisfied with where I am. Purge me. I'm, 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 I'm not satisfied with my level of growth. Purge me. I'm, 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 I'm giving you purging permission. That, that you can do whatever you need to do with me to make me better. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this in, 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 in this house because when you give the Lord purging permission, what you're doing is saying, Lord, whoever you got to take from me and whatever you got to take from me, however you got to do it, Lord, I'm giving, y'all ain't hearing me. When you give the Lord purging permission, you're telling the Lord, I, 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 I am your vessel, Lord, and, and that stuff that may feel good, that stuff that may look good, that stuff I may want in my life, God, if you determine uh, that he's not the one, if you determine she's not the one, uh, if you determine they're not the one, uh, if you determine this is not the place, whatever you've got to do, purge! <laughs> I, I knew it was going to get kind of quiet, but watch this. What, what, th th this is only... For those folk that want to grow. Ask your neighbor, neighbor, do you want to grow? You, you, you see, this is only for those people that really want to bear fruit. Th th this ain't for those Christians uh, that's satisfied with being a barren believer, that you, you, you're satisfied with being a tree that's not bearing any fruit. Uh, uh, this is only for those mature saints of God uh, that desires not to just be a barren believer, but you want to be productive. In fact, look at John chapter number 15, verses number 1 and 2. Let me read this for you. John 15, verse 1 and 2. Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the husband man watch this and every branch in me that beareth not fruit he takes it away and every branch in me that beareth fruit uh, he's going to purge it y'all ain't reading your bible watch this every branch in me he's going to take away but watch this even those branches in me that's bearing some fruit uh, he's not going to leave those alone uh, he's going to come and snip 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 on my life uh, until I'm in the position uh, I can be everything that God desires me to be and I don't know who I'm talking to but God is telling me to tell you I'm not going to leave you alone I'm gonna keep waking you up in the morning I'm gonna keep shaking your life I'm gonna keep interrupting your relationships I'm gonna keep disturbing your peace I'm gonna keep purging your life until I make you everything I desire for you to be David says purge me <sighs> I wish I had a praying church in this house. Purge! And when you finish purging me, help me, Jesus. Then he says, wash. Someone just yell, wash me. Yell it again, say, wash me. I don't want to live a dirty life. Wash! I don't want to have dirty thoughts. Wash! I don't want to have a dirty life. Ah, uh, wash! I don't want to have dirty friends. Ah, uh, wash! I feel this thing today. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch, watch this. Um, um, sit down, sit down. L let me just show you. D David says, wash me, wash me, wash me. H here it is in, in, verse, in, in verse, look at the next verse. D D David says something so interesting, you got to see this. D David says, um, 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 blot out my iniquities. Um, um, I got some spots on me. Um, 
I'm, I'm spotted. Just, I know you don't want to say this, but just tell your neighbor, I'm spotted. I'm, I'm spotted. Y'all ain't saying, you ain't talking to your neighbor. I'm spotted. I'm spotted. I'm spot. I, I got some spots on me. Let me see if I can give you a, a good example of what I'm trying to say. And I got to get out of here. Um, a, a few weeks ago, I was preaching um, in or Orlando, and, and I normally don't do this, but I decided to, to eat before I went to church. I was hungry, didn't get a chance to eat, and I normally don't do this, but since I was pressed for time, what I did was I, I got dressed and I ordered rooms. I don't normally do that, but I, I got dressed first, and, and I ordered room service room service came grilled chicken sandwich with fries put ketchup on the fry I don't normally do this because I, I'm running late but I'm already dressed for church but 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 I order uh, room service and and the process of of, of eating uh, my fries Wyburn that had ketchup on the fries uh, I ate, man, I, I made a mistake I, I didn't try to do it I, I didn't try to get dirty come on talk to me somebody I, I didn't try to mess up because I knew I was going into the house of the Lord but what happened was uh, I made a mistake uh, and, and I ate the french fry and I got a spot on my tie Lord help me Jesus here it is I got a spot on my tie watch this it's a stain that I just can't cover up because uh, if it was a little lower at the base of the tie I would have just kept my jacket closed however it, it came up around the neck and I got a stain on this tie and even if I tied the tie differently come on talk to me somebody the stain would have still shown however the good news is uh, I was staying in a five star property uh, and when I went into the bathroom uh, there was a little jar with amenities in the jar and there was a little package of spot remover help me somebody and what I did was I didn't have to send the whole tie to the cleaners I didn't send the whole suit to the cleaners I used a little spot remover because as much as I was trying I got my white tie spotted come and let me talk to you you see when you mess up you don't need to go back to salvation which is the cleaner all you need is the blood of Jesus Christ which is able to remove your spot and don't you fool yourself every child of God will get dirty sometime uh. Uh, I'm talking to folk right now and that's the problem with some of y'all you bust up in here like you ain't never had a spot on your dress uh, you bust up in here like you ain't never have a spot on but the difference between some of y'all and others of us is uh, we know how spotted we are but I thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ uh, David says Lord wash me wash me and I shall, I'm running out of time. I'll be whiter than snow if you wash. Y'all ain't hearing me. Sit down, sit down. Wash me. Oh, watch this. Purge me. Someone just say purge me. Wash me. Then verse 10, then create in me. A clean heart. Robert, are you getting this? Creating me. A clean heart. Can the church say create? Uh, Wayne, um, um, the word create in verse 10 is the same word in Genesis 1-1. Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God. Watch this. So in Genesis 1-1, God took nothing from nothing and made something. Are you still with me? Genesis 1-1, um, Bo, he, he didn't take what was there and make something new out of what was there. But Jude, he took something that wasn't there and made something different. David says, don't take my heart and wash it off. Y'all ain't hearing me. Make a new heart that's clean and give me that heart. Because if you give me the same heart, the same stuff you delivered me from last year, it's just a matter of time. Before I find myself, 
Oh, y'all ain't hearing me in this house. I'm talking to somebody right now. God delivers you from some stuff, and six months later, you're right back in the same mess he delivered you from. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. God delivered you from some people, uh, and five, y'all ain't hearing me, and five months later, you in the same mess because what he did was uh, you had the same heart but cleaned off. You need to tell the Lord, uh, give me a brand new heart. Uh, change my affection so much. I can look him in the face, but, but don't love him no more. I can go where they are, but don't have a dip. Y'all ain't hearing me. Change my heart. So I said, well, I gave him my heart. Well, just get a new heart. Let the Negro have the old heart. God is able to give you a new heart. I wish I had a praying church. You tripping because the old heart got broke. You tripping because the old heart got dogged out. You tripping of what happened. Listen, Negro, move on. God will give you a new heart. I don't want the same old heart. I'm out of time. I'm out of time. I'm, I, I got to quit. I'm out of time. I, I got to get out of here. But watch this. The text. I'm out of time. The, 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 let me just get to the ending. The, the, I'm out of time. I'm out of time. I got I to gotta go. I, I'm out of time. I, I'm out of time. I got to stop. Watch this. Watch this. I'm finished. David says, Lord, wash me, purge me, give me. He's convicted by God. Watch this. He cries out to God. But the text doesn't end until he's compensated by God. You see, the premise of this message, Herm, is that God can give you favor after failure. Are you hearing me? You see, you see, watch this. I got to get out of here. The, the, the failure was when David slept with Bathsheba. And, and because of his conscience choice to sin, there was consequences of the choice. The Bible says that the child that Bathsheba was pregnant with, the Bible says that that child died. Are y'all hearing me? But I thank God because when you go back to 2 Samuel chapter 12 and you read around verse number 24, after David gets up, after he washes himself off, after he worships the Lord, after he comes back home, the Bible says he goes back in and sleeps with her again and then she conceives another child named Solomon, which means that, that God gave him another chance. Oh, you missed your chance to shout. Because the blessingness of the text is uh, even though you fell down, God would allow you to get right back up again uh, and go right back to the place of your failure. But this time he'll flip the script. Uh, and what didn't work the first time because you were out of order will work now because you are in order. And I need somebody in this house that know that you are the representation uh, of God's second chance uh, to give God praise uh, knowing that you can have faith after failure and the doors of the church are open because the premise of the message the premise of the message is that David goes to God and says Lord work on me y'all ain't hearing me listen 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 two cars both of them broke. Two cars. Neither one start. Neither one work. The difference between one car and the other car is while neither one work, one car is on blocks in the driveway. The other car is in the shop being repaired. 